Hello. I'm very excited today. You know why? Because today we are going to talk about the trumpet. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Terry Keller. I teach trumpet at Tapster Music in beautiful White Rock, British Columbia. I've been playing the trumpet since I was 13 years old. I hold a Bachelor of Music degree from Berklee College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. I've played professionally in big bands, paid orchestras, small jazz groups, brass quintets, polka bands, and even blues bands. Wow. I used to have hair. <sighs> Anyways, maybe you're thinking of starting the trumpet, or maybe you have made some small trumpet baby steps. Well, this video is aimed at you. The trumpet is capable of producing silky ballads and brilliant fanfares and everything in between. With a trumpet, you can communicate the entire spectrum of musical expression and emotion. Trumpet parts are some of the funnest and most exciting parts to play in a concert band or a jazz band. It's a great instrument and an excellent vehicle to become your musical voice. All right, before we get going too far, it might be a good idea to show you the names of the main parts of a trumpet. We start with the mouthpiece. Next comes the receiver, that's where the mouthpiece plugs in. And then of course, here is the lead pipe. There is your main tuning slide. And this middle part here is called the valve casing. And those are your finger buttons. The part inside the valve casings are more properly called the pistons, but people also call them valves, so that's fine. They can be removed, as you can sort of see. Psst. Don't remove the pistons until you've been shown how to do it properly. Just say. Your pistons and the outside of the valve casing are usually numbered one, two, and three. This is handy and keeps you from mixing the pistons into the wrong position. The number one valve is the valve that's closest to you when you're playing the instrument. So there's our first valve. So this is number one, number two, number three. Here's the top cap. I already showed you that when I took the piston out. And there is the bottom cap. That also removes for maintenance purposes. The smaller slides are named for the valve that they are attached to. So there is the first slide. There's the second slide. And there is the third slide. This right here is the water key. Now there are two main types of water keys. A model water keys, like on this horn, look like this. And there are a more common type of water key called lever water keys. You can probably figure out why they're called lever water keys. The reason you have water keys is because it's necessary to empty the water that builds up in a trumpet as you play. Don't worry, it's not spit, it's condensation. The trumpet is the highest pitch voice of the brass instrument family. Brass instruments are characterized by the fact that they're made of brass. Well, most of the time. And have a brass mouthpiece usually plated with silver or gold. And it has a cup-shaped mouthpiece like that. The most common brass instruments are the tuba, euphonium, baritone, French horn, trombone, and the trumpet, and its close relatives, the cornet and the flugelhorn. I just happen to have a cornet and a flugelhorn with me. So let's see what the cornet looks like. There you go. Pretty cool. And here's what it sounds like. After that, we 
now have the flugelhorn. This is a really smooth, fluffy instrument. I love it. The most common trumpet in use today is the B-flat trumpet. And it's the trumpet that everyone starts on when they are learning to play. This is the trumpet that you're probably familiar with, and it's used in jazz, commercial, and concert band music. The B-flat will likely be the only type of trumpet you will ever need or want to play. However, the B-flat trumpet is not the only type of trumpet available. There are bugles and natural trumpets that don't have any valves at all. And there are small trumpets with shorter tubing, such as the C and the E flat trumpet. Those are mostly used by soloists who play classical styles of music. I have an example of a very small trumpet often used in Baroque solo music. It's called the piccolo trumpet. Let's have a look at that. Here it is. Very small. It's got about half the length of the tubing of a regular B-flat trumpet. Here's what it sounds like. You can alter the basic sound of the trumpet using a mute. Mutes fit inside the bell of the instrument. There are lots of different mutes available, but the three common mutes are the straight mute, and it sounds like this. And there is the cup mute. How do you think that's going to sound? Let's see. This is the Harmon Mute. It has a very jazzy sound. You see, you hear this a lot in jazz music. You can have a second sound of the Harmon Mute by adding the stem. Now, when you buy a Harmon Mute, the stem usually comes with it. This is what this sounds like. It's kind of neat. It sounds like you can make the trumpet talk. So cool. As you can see, there's a lifetime of different types of trumpets and musical styles to explore in the world of trumpet playing. So now, let's talk about making the sound on a trumpet. Any musical instrument requires vibration to produce sound. A reed vibrating, a string being plucked, a stick hitting a cymbal, you get the idea. Trumpet players have a lot in common with singers. Just like singers, we have to make the sound with our body. In the case of the trumpet, the vibration we produce is by buzzing our lips, like this. <laughs> you then buzz into the mouthpiece As you can hear, that sound isn't all that appealing and not very musical. But when we connect that duck-like mouthpiece buzz sound to the trumpet, the tubing amplifies and we have the characteristic sound of a trumpet.
When you start learning the trumpet, you'll have to spend your first few days simply learning to play a steady note. I often tell my absolute beginners at our first lesson, our goal is to just produce a sound on the instrument, any sound at all. Now, the good news is I've never had a student that hasn't been able to get the sound through the horn. When you first start practicing, you'll get tired quickly. I recommend you start out practicing five minute sessions, maybe three or four times throughout the day. Over the weeks, months and years, you'll become stronger and more efficient in your playing and you'll be able to play a lot longer in one sitting. The nice thing about a trumpet is that it's relatively easy and small to carry around. You don't have to lug around a big amplifier like a guitar or a bass player and you don't have the complex setup and teardown like someone who plays the drum set. <laughs> Drummers are always asking us to help loading in and out their drums. Maintaining your trumpet day to day is easy compared to many other instruments. Before we talk about maintaining a trumpet, I wouldn't try doing any maintenance on your own until you've been shown how to do things properly. Basic trumpet maintenance isn't difficult at all, but you can cause minor issues if you haven't been shown correctly. But once you're in the know, there are three three things that you'll need to do regularly to help maintain your trumpet. Number one, you need to oil your valves or oil the pistons. Even though this is super simple, it only takes about a minute or two. This is the number one maintenance problem I see with my students. For some reason, no one likes to oil their valves. Trumpet valves need to be oiled daily. Yes, daily for maximum smoothness. If not, they'll start to stick and move sluggishly. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to play a trumpet with sticky valves. Daily oiling of the valves or the pistons will also have the added bonus of keeping the inside of the valve casing cleaner longer. Number two, you need to clean your mouthpiece. I like to do this once or twice a week. It keeps the mouthpiece clean and it kind of feels nice on your lips too. It's super simple to do using a special inexpensive cleaning brush. There's one right there. Some warm water and a bit of soap. The last thing you want is last week's lunch building bacteria colonies inside your mouthpiece and then putting that on your lips. Ugh. Number three, grease your slides. You want your slides to operate smoothly and prevent from getting stuck. The main tuning slide allows us to change the overall tuning of the instrument. With the first and third slide, we can tune certain notes while playing. Let me demonstrate how that would work with the third slide. Watch the third slide at the end of this little snippet. Did you see the movement? The second slide isn't used for tuning on the fly and it has a bit of a tendency to sort of get stuck because we don't use it very often. So just remember to re-grease it once a month or so. There are other things we have to do, such as cleaning the trumpet inside the horn, replacing felts and water keys occasionally, repairing the odd dent, but these are few and far between, and you could even just drop it into a trumpet shop and have somebody else do it for you. So for now, just focus on the three main items when you are starting out. Well, I hope you learned a few things about the trumpet you didn't know before. If you are interested in taking lessons with me, just call or email the White Rock branch of Tapestry Music to schedule a time. If you'd like more information about me, you can check out my website at www.terrykeller.ca. So, until next time, take care, keep listening, and always keep practicing. Thanks for watching, and remember, the world needs more trumpet players.